Hello everyone and welcome to Respectful Dave. Today I'm going to play a game and I'm going to explain what I play, like my game in general, what's going on in my mind, so my thought process. Your job as a viewer is to pause the video from time to time, compare what you think with what I think, and then we can learn. Okay, we found the... we're playing as Drunkestein. We play d4. We're going to occupy the center, we're going to take out our knights and bishops, like this, knight c3, bishop f4. Knights and bishops usually go first because you can't move rooks that easily, for instance. And the reason why I wouldn't move a rook here is because I want to castle, right? So I'm going to play something like e3. Well, I could play f3, as I think, but I'm going to play e3. The reason is because I want to move this bishop. Bishop f5, interesting. So my opponent doesn't want to play e6. That would be leaving this bishop inside the pawn chain. So bishop f5, very clever move. I'm going to play bishop d3. Because this bishop doesn't have any other prospects. Um, bishop d3 seems reasonable. On top of that, I want to also put my knight on e2. Which I wouldn't be able to do if I put my bishop on e2. Right? I'm going to play this. And the reason why I'm moving this knight is because originally this knight on c3 is not doing very well. It's misplaced. You don't, you don't want your knight there usually. And the reason why I put it in the first place is because there are some knight b5 threats that, that, that come with this knight c3. But after black plays a6, I have to adapt to black's response. I would have played something totally different if black hadn't played a6. That's why chess is complicated. Some, some things apply for certain moves and certain positions, and yeah. But part of it is understanding uh, dynamics and opening principles. But I'm going to put my knight on g3. Knight on h5, that's an interesting move. Hmm. I'm going to take it. Well, taking it is the, the first instinct, because after bishop takes, I know for a fact that I should be fine. After I move like castles for instance or for example i should say sorry but i'm calculating stuff like bishop takes g6 hg has to happen if knight takes f4 i have bishop takes f7 and then takes so bishop g6 hg and can i take advantage of that is there any way so knight takes h5 rook takes h5 hmm doesn't seem like it taking too much time on this i have to be a little bit more i'm efficient so i'm gonna take and my idea here, what was my idea? My idea is that, well, now this, that this is pinned, it's a little bit annoying. There are two ways you can deal with a pin. You can put the bishop on e2 and just... Now you can finally move the knight. Or you can play something like queen d2. Say, I'm not worried about you taking because I'm not castled yet. And um, even if I was castled on the short side and king side... It wouldn't be such a such a tragedy to to have these double pawns. It would be a little bit annoying. If I'm completely honest, but maybe it's it maybe it's the most natural way of responding. Okay, so bishop d6 makes sense. First things first. I mean, I could take here and then see if this is convenient. That's a forcing move. So why wouldn't I? Why wouldn't I take a look at that first? Second move I take a look at is 95. But I also have this e4 move, which seems to give me some some dynamics, dy dynamic play. And I am aware that yeah. So as what am I, what my opponent played seems to win a pawn on d4. But I thought I had enough compensation. I might not though. Then I have to concentrate. I'm starting to get in trouble. And what I usually do when I think when I when I think I'm in trouble is make things a little bit complicated. So I'm already kind of getting into that mindset of finding complications over the board. So e takes d5 has to happen. And my claim is that even though I lost a pawn, because I it did seem like I lost a pawn, I could take with the queen, oh, but that loses to bishop b4. So I have to be careful. I'm going to take with a pawn. And what I'm claiming is, what I'm trying to say is, I'm claiming that the g file is open. So if I play something like Queenside castles, which is, looks looks absolutely insane. I'm claiming that it's going to be a crazy game. So it's it's going to get to a crazy position. I've castled on queenside. I have no protection on the queenside. But on the on the upside, I can put my pieces towards the kingside. Um, my opponent gave a check, so I'm happy already to keep pieces over the board. That's a win. Um, and I guess that after king b1, queen b6, my opponent was happy. To which I do agree. But um, it's definitely more complicated than that. I'm going to play h4. 
this is a, an opposite color sorry opposite king side sorry i keep saying this sorry I'm, I'm concentrating please forgive me this is an opposite castling position so i castle in the queen side my opponent castle in the sh in the in the king's in the king side so what's gonna happen is that we usually throw pawn storms when this happens the pawn storming is is 60 percent of the time what happens when you when you castle opposite sides which means that this is a dynamic position b5 queen b6 is no longer an idea to give a check which is nice to know and now i'm gonna try to create this battery with queen d3 i could play bishop c2 but i think queen queen d3 is a little bit better 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 to do it this way and if, if white, sorry, if white gets this queen d3 and black has to play g6, then I get to open the, the h file. And that's very scary. So you have to watch out. On top of that, I'm also attacking d5. If I get to trade queens, I have the bishop here at the end of the day. So you must not um, underestimate the bishop here. Knight e5 might be, might be a good move by my opponent, trying to avoid queen d3. But okay, this was played instead. Of, I'm gonna play bishop g5. Attacking the queen. Queen e5, I think. Hmm. Queen d3 seems logical. Okay, I'm gonna play queen d3. Queen it takes h7 is a very big threat, of course. Now queen takes d5 is there as well. Hg, as promised. Fg seems logical. Yeah. And now I'm gonna trade queens. I'm done with all these dynamic things. I, I see one route in which I can kind of take take my advantage out of it and take the danger out of it. So now I'm back to solid play because I feel like I have a long-term advantage. So no need to make things crazy anymore. I'm going to play bishop b3. There's this diagonal. Watch out. Mm, that's a good move. That is a good move. So I'm going to play f4. Fortunately, I'm going to lose one of the bishops, but um, in exchange, I am um, fixing my pawn structure a little bit. I'm going to play king c2 next move, and rook a1 is going to be something to worry about for my opponent. And it's funny, we, we, it was a crazy position, now we're just getting into some sort of um, calm position. I'm going to play rook a1, I'm always always thinking how to improve my pieces. So rook a1, maybe rook a6 is going to be forgotten. Now I get to get rid of this pawn. So do you see these were double pawns? Now I get rid of one of them. Oh, I was about to play rook g1, but then I realized that rook g6 was okay. But once I realized that was a problem, I didn't do it. And the reason why now I did it is because I did it with the other rook and a6 was weak. So... I did it in a very happy way. I'm going to put all my pawns on this on this structure because my bishop is defending both of the weaknesses. I'm going to play rook a7. Maybe bishop c5 is going to be winning. Like, um, going to be um, simplifying. Bishop f6, rook f7 would be winning. So my opponent has to watch out. Rook f7 is coming. Yeah. Now I'm going to... I'm gonna play rook d7. I'm tickling. I'm tickling. I'm not sure what to do, so I give. I, I play some. I, I attack my opponent's pieces. It's 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 a safe way of, of approaching this. Okay, so rook king f3. I'm happy to. I was a little bit more about king g4. And I think I have rook d5 now. And I take this pawn. So now now I'm not only one pawn but two pawns, and I think I win a piece now. Because of bishop f6 and rook takes d2. Okay, good game. So what happened there is that, in a nutshell, we, we developed our pieces. It got crazy for a second. I thought that after this e4 move, I had some other form of compensation. After bishop takes f3 and g takes f3, which is a forced sequence. But it turned out that I, I it was more of a blunder from my side. So as a consequence, I have to look for a complicated game. If I If I do nothing, if I trade pieces, and if I kind of defend them passively i'm going to lose because i'm down a pawn so i'm going to castle queenside thinking that in the future I, I will be able to throw my pawns like this something i wouldn't be able to do if my king was on the king side um and yeah it got complicated I, I attacked at some point i transformed the position into something that i know for sure that i won't lose anytime soon 
such as like like this. So if I play something else other than queen takes d5, um, maybe bishop b3 was interesting, but it's out of my control. Probably bishop b3 is winning now that I look at it. But I just go for the secure um, end game where I'm, I have the bishop here, and um, I know that my pieces are a little bit active. And after a while, we get to this position where bishop b3 was a bad move. I thought that it was creating some sort of threat with rook d7, but knight a5 was a good find. And um, I think the mistake from my opponent went to allow f5, first of all, and second of all, to, to play rook g6 in this position. I think either bishop g7 or king f7 would have been fine. But rook g6, I just win a pawn. And eventually, it was a little, already, already a little bit complicated, sorry. King g4 was a little bit better here. Um, I guess my opponent didn't like f3, king g3, and and it looks scary. Maybe some bishop f2 ideas, but I think that 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 end game shouldn't be winning. In fact, that that that's a bad move. So after king g4, I I wouldn't be so sure why this so comfortable. But after rook e8, which is a nervous check, it's, it's it is a check, but it's, it's it's benefit it benefits white because if king f3, then rook d5 is coming with a check, grabbing this pawn. And after the final blunder, bishop d2, now I give a check. And another check. So now I get this discovered attack over the bishop of king h3, rook takes d2. Rook f8 is the last try, but then I get rook d6, defending the bishop. And I'm up a couple of pawns and the bishop. So that should be enough for me to win. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed it or if you have any questions, please let me know in the comments. And as always, have a nice day.